I'm joined today by Willis Nadwenge from Kingdom Securities, who will help us to do a deep dive into the agricultural sector. Perhaps, Willis, we can start this conversation with just a brief of how the market is doing uh, since we started in the year. Uh, the market has become positive. Last year was a very bad year for the Nairobi Stock Securities Exchange. Uh, one thing we noted is that the foreign investors really, really shied away from the market. Unfortunately, there are one or two things that we can say. But if you compare the whole of 2021 and 2022, um, the foreign activity stood at about 56.6% compared to 64.6% 64, 64 in 2020. So we've seen that there was a little bit of a downturn on that front. Um, con considering that um, companies performed well, we saw profitability, companies go back to profitability, we saw dividend payment in the last year. But the only thing we noted is that unfortunately, um, companies that are listed at the Nairobi Security Exchange did not sit well on the MSCI index, considering that number one, uh, we had seen a downgrade for K KCB Group of uh, the previous, uh, the previous um, listing, that was May, May listing. That was not reversed in the November listing. We saw a removal of uh, uh, BAT and inclusion of Stanchart. Uh, Stanchart. BAT, unfortunately, is a little bit liquid compared to Stanchart. So those are some of the things that we saw affecting the stock market. A uh, concentration remain on the two, uh, the three big, uh, the three big markets. Even now, as uh, we are talking, the concentration has remained three big markets. Uh, the only thing is that we know Safaricom, which covers about 46% of the market, has been on the down low due to the Ethiopia, the Ethiopia saga. Yes. The Ethiopian uh, Commun Communication Authority said that they'll suspend the issuing of the third license, and also there was a factor about the money market, the cash, mobile mark, uh, mobile money, uh, market in that area. So those are the two things that are limiting Safaricom. But as peace, uh, as uh, slowdown in uh, conflict in Ethiopia is coming up, um, the uptake of uh, the concentration on re-entering the market in Ethiopia coming up, they've already decided uh, when they started. So that will at least, at least boost uh, Safaricom performance. And you know, if Safaricom goes up, everything goes up in the market. Yeah, so um, the market has been generally on a lull. You think it's due to the fact that Safaricom is not getting the mobile money uh, dealing in Ethiopia. It's not that. It's not that they're going to get it. It's that, that they said they might extend the licenses for mobile money. So that, that and, and we know that uh, mobile money is one of the key things that is pushing It's the absolutely the primary, um, I mean, it's the, the golden egg in Ethiopia, really, yes. uh, because the, the mobile money industry there is not as developed as ours. Not only the mobile money, but also the banking, the banking industry in Ethiopia is not that well developed compared to Kenya. Mm. So if that happens, we know that very well about 37% of the population in Ethiopia it has uh, is covered uh, technologically wise, mobile wise, but even lower in terms of banking. So if they're able to penetrate with the mobile money, which has facilitated sector deepening in Kenya and replicate it there, then that would be a ticker. Yeah, but it looks like the Ethiopians are really not keen on, on, on this um, because one, they gave them a license without the mobile money component. Two, they told them that by end of January 2022, you'll have the license. And now they just are not feeling that vibe anymore. No, the license there, they've already been given the license. But the mobile money license? Not the mobile money. The, the mobile money license, they had not said that they were going to be given. They said the that Prime Minister get said it, by end of January. Okay. But now with the, the little bit of conflict, that might take time. But we still see that will... And then the other fact about the market, let's remember it's January. People are still rebalancing their book. Uh, mm. the ones who so the them. January effect is also being felt in the market. It is. Fair enough. I'm keen on the agricultural sector today. Um, I know it's probably not one of your pet subjects, <laughs> but it is mine. So let's just discuss the agricultural sector a little bit. What is your take about the agricultural sector in the market? Last year was bad. We know very well that there was drought uh, last year, which definitely affected the agricultural market. The volumes in terms of tea went down. The prices were really, really much affected. But remember that when the, the little bit of uh, dry seasons in any, any, any agricultural sector, the key performance, tea, coffee, and horticulture tend to pick up. Uh, the volume will be down, but the quality of, of the product will be up. So that's some of the things that help sustain uh, the value on that. But again, is this why Kakuzi and Limuru tea are giving profit warnings? Uh, no, not, not like that. Um, there are different factors that are coming in. Number one is that the European market, 
has has been having the on and off uh, section on that and these companies rely heavily on in the exports market. about 64 percent of Absolutely. their produce exported so if the international markets are on lockdown then it will affect the local uh, local producers so that's a very key key factor mm -hmm. number two again for kakuzi don't forget again they had a lull uh, when the beginning of the year considering that they had been sued for human rights uh, human rights uh, they've already been sorted that issue out uh, they're back into production they're bought into export that's another thing. Number three is the product portfolio. We've yeah. seen that they are, they've worked very hard. Sassini and Kakuzi have worked very hard to try and rebalance their product for, portfolio. Mm. Uh, they're moving away from tea and focusing on uh, avocados and macadamias. So those are picking up in Asian market and European market. With uh, Kakuzi exporting about 64% uh, of, uh, of uh, avocados in terms of their uh, portfolio. So when you look at Kakuzi, don't think about tea much. Think about avocados and macadamias. Absolutely. And they are saying that uh, they produce less avocados. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, really, the tree is there. All you have to do is harvest the avocado and sell it. But remember, the quality of what you're going to export is really, really a big factor. Um, the quality and, and the regional market. So the production might be a factor, but the quality of the production. Again, I will remind you that agriculture is very heavily dependent on rain and also uh, diseases. So if... And, and, and the international markets. Yes, so those are the, some of the factors that you look at. Um, but what I can tell you is that uh, Kakuzi has done a very good job in trying to sustain their production. They okay. already have 16 dams across the region, which help in production in case of drought. Mm. Uh, the other factor is that uh, they've really improved on their international market uh, exposure. They've uh, gone into, uh, into Asian market. They're trying to spread their wings to that Asian market yeah. and also Australian market. So this would play a very big factor for that. Uh, there has been a traditional feeling in the market that the agricultural sector is full of companies that are undervalued because of their large tracts of land and assets. I don't know what your thought is about this. The valuation of land unfortunately comes after a period of time. So you cannot value, you cannot value the land every year. Some companies do it uh, after every three years, Absolutely. some do it after every five years. But again, also the, the product on the land, what we call the biological, biological valuation is also key. So mm. if, you're, if you're moving from one product like to another... Like now the avocado trees yes. are actually assets. Yes, those are assets. So if you're, sh if you're going to, for example, cut down, for example, cut down tea to plant avocado means that you've destroyed one biological asset to plant another biological asset. So the valuation of that land will come down. Then after a while it, go up, it goes up. So that has been a very big factor. And if you look at it very well, the last, I think, three years, and you look at the annual reports, uh, maybe let's talk about 2018, 2019, there was very heavy uh, valuation of the biological asset, which played very well into this company's product. So whenever we see heavy rains in uh, globally, then you'll see the valuations go up. So those are some of the factors that will affect them. All right. Um, there is uh, to be introduced the warehouse receipt system, uh, which is supposed to be implemented in Kenya and to help farmers, um, especially on the storage front. Um, what are your thoughts about this and how will it affect the agricultural sector? It, it is a positive thing for the agricultural sector. It is a very, very positive thing for the agriculture. Anybody who's going to get the, 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 the warehousing receipting fast is going to move a very big, uh, very uh, miles ahead. Yeah. And we've seen a few companies do that. True Foods, for example, mm -hmm. is one of the companies that have tried to, to, to link up farmers, immediate payment of farmers, and then uh, the, the suppliers. Yeah. What I can tell you about farming is that most farmers want their money immediately as when as the as product as well. is ready mm. they want their money immediately so that they can whether it's that's what sustain them on that or go back to farming again mm. so they want that immediately so now the receipts can then now be resold to someone else yes now oh. the most unfortunate thing is that we don't have proper storage systems in this country we have very heavy production of potatoes in kinangop but where is the potatoes going last KFC is not buying it <laughs> <laughs> for sure uh, in december uh, in was it December or that period Q3 Q4 of the year, we saw potatoes trading at about 400 shillings 
per, per, very cheaply. Yeah. Right now, those potatoes are very expensive. They're, they're trading about four, five, three thousand for per pound. Because we didn't store them. But we didn't store them. But you see, now we have a, a shortage. Now, is, is this going to open the window for the exchange, the futures exchange um, that we've been talking about? That is the essence of receipt, uh, receipt warehousing. The essence of receipt warehousing is so that you can be able to create commodities exchange. Absolutely. Both for coffee and any perishable product. So what will happen is that. I buy from the farmers with immediate, pay them immediately, then look on how I'm going to either process the product or store it properly for the, for the short, uh, short, short period. Mm. So the essence will be value addition. If you're able to do value addition, then the farmers will be able to get that. So the, I buy the potatoes, um, process them, uh, uh, fast processing, that is the maybe removal of the coverage and that, yeah. and then either freeze them or put them in cold storage for a while. So when there is storage, then I can start coming out with my potatoes and sell, uh, sell those potatoes. So uh, that would be a very key, key factor. So anybody who's going to get their receipt warehousing first, yeah. then they're going to profit big. Uh, uh, good for them. I mean, forgive me, but I'm thinking, um, how would I enjoy a potato that has been peeled and stored uh, as uh, being sold to me as uh, fries? But that's a conversation for another day. It, um, it's, it's an interesting place to be. Well, I want us to uh, take a short break. Perhaps when we come back, uh, we can now go delve deeper into the Sassini um, stock and the Kakuzi stock, because I think there's a lot to discuss there. We, you had already mentioned about them, um, and I think there's a lot to, to, to discuss there. Feel free to engage with us on social media, uh, at the Amuramugi uh, or at Metropole, and then we can continue this conversation uh, moving forward. Don't go away.